Hello, everyone, and uh, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. I'm Jarl Crocker, Director of Training and Technical Assistance here at the Community Action Partnership. And on behalf of our CEO, Denise Harlow, I just wanted to welcome all of you to tuning in uh, for our video series on creating a local theory of change, uh, implementing the ROMA cycle and the next generation performance management framework. So today we'll be focused on developing a theory of change. So this presentation is part of a series that's intended for community action agency directors, staff, board members, and volunteers interested in learning about how to help your community action agency increase its capacity and its results. The Roma Next Generation video series consists of the modules that you see on your screen. Um, I'm now going to turn it over to our presenters uh, to get it started. Uh, so with that, uh, welcome uh, Courtney Kohler, Senior Associate here at the Partnership. Courtney, take it away. So I'm Courtney Kohler. I'm the Senior Associate at the Community Action Partnership, um, working with the training and technical assistance there. And um, we're going to be going through this video series for Roma Next Generation. Um, as Jarl mentioned, you can see the different modules that are going to be created um, that are in progress on your screen. And these can really be used in any order um, and um, just helping to connect the pieces of the Roma cycle um, and looking at the different concepts um, within this next generation of Roma. Um, so with me today um, to present this particular concept, we have uh, Dr. Barbara Mooney. Um, she's the director of the Association for Nationally Certified Roma Trainers, and she is a co-author of the Introduction to Roma Curriculum, a research fellow for the National Association for State Community Services Programs, um, a consultant to the National Community Action Partnership, and also a regional coordinator for Region 3, um, RPIC. And she's also a contributing author to Temple University's Strengths-Based Family Worker Training Curriculum, which Micah um, also worked on. She's also with us today. And then over the past five years, Barbara has uh, worked on the development of this OCS performance management framework, um, which is really where Roma Next Generation um, comes out of. And then in addition, we also have Micah Pyatt, and she has been a nationally certified trainer for the past eight years. She's currently a master trainer and on the board of the Association for Nationally Certified Roma Trainers. Um, she works on training and curriculum development for Temple University and was a former um, staff member of the Community Action Association of Pennsylvania. So she's glad to stay involved in community action through Roma and also through Temple's Strengths-Based Family Worker Program. Um, so through this presentation we're going to go through today, um, as Barbara and Micah present, uh, we're going to briefly introduce this concept of the theory of change and consider how to develop a local theory of change. So accompanying this video is actually a workshop as well um, that goes deeper into this topic and can be done at the local level um, to help facilitate this process. So we hope that you use this as a helpful introduction to the theory of change and then consider how the workshop might be um, beneficial to your agency. So the workshop is one that's very adaptable to your needs, and so it can be um, facilitated in a half-day session, a full-day retreat, or in segments um, through different meetings and trainings. Um, so this process that we're going to discuss today really complements the other processes and trainings, um, such as the full Roma cycle, strategic planning, and community needs assessment. Um, so really encourage you to keep those things in mind and think about those connections as we go through this presentation. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Micah. All right. Thank you, Courtney. So we're going to start introducing this concept of a theory of change by sharing an example um, that will introduce what do we mean by a theory of change and start to get you thinking about how it can be a useful part of the planning process and evaluation process. So I'm going to start by telling you uh, a story out of my life. These are my daughters, Rosalina and Genevieve. Uh, they are two and three. So as you can imagine, our household is pretty busy. And um, we have identified an ideal condition in our household, which is this. At bedtime, uh, it is best if they are both sleeping in their own beds, as you see here. However, what was happening more frequently was this, that Rosalina was finding her way into our bed in the middle of the night, most nights of the week. And so we quickly identified a need, uh, something that was not an ideal condition. 
and so we started our planning process. Uh, so our need is that Rosalina doesn't sleep in her own bed all night, and the outcome that we identified is that Rosalina will sleep in her own bed all night. Uh, so as part of the theory of change, uh, we are asked to think more critically and start to think deeper about our plan. And part of that process is to identify uh, the underlying assumptions that we all bring into the planning process. So uh, let's talk about what I mean by assumptions. So an assumption is a belief or idea that's based in logic but formed without evidence, and it's unconfirmed. So it's not fact. It's something that logically makes sense to us, uh, why we would believe that, but it's not a fact. We don't have the evidence to back it up. So for example, when we are invited to a party, uh, we generally would assume that there's going to be food there, even if somebody doesn't uh, specifically say what food they're going to have. We, we believe there will be food there. That's a logical assumption for us to make. Uh, but sometimes we might be wrong. Maybe there's not food provided, and so we show up, and then we would be hungry. Uh, so that is part of the, the concept of an assumption, is that sometimes they're wrong. Um, and so part of the theory of change is to be able to articulate those assumptions so we know what we're bringing to, um, bringing to this process of planning, to, to articulate what those underlying assumptions are so that we can look back later and see if they were right or if they were wrong. Uh, and another important concept with assumptions is that two different people can have two different assumptions that they're bringing to the situation. And if we don't express those, we're not aware uh, of the, that difference in perspective. So if we look back at the situation with Rosalina sleeping in her own bed, and we start to think more critically about why is this important to us? Why uh, do we care that she sleeps in her own bed? Well, we know that quality of sleep is important for good health and good mood. And so we assume that if she sleeps in her own bed, that the quality of sleep will improve for the whole family, uh, particularly us, right? Uh, so it's important for us to articulate that that's the underlying reason for wanting to get to this outcome. So we put that on our theory of change. And then we start to think, what, uh, what can we do? How do we get from the, um, the current condition to the outcome that we want? You can see on the needs there on the left and underneath it in the green boxes are the uh, underlying beliefs about why that need is important to us. Uh, and so when we're starting to identify in the middle, what can we do? What is the service or the intervention that we're gonna do to lead to that outcome? Uh, we need to identify the assumptions that we bring to that process as well. So underneath in the, in the blue shapes, uh, you'll see that we start to identify a strategy where we're going to give her a reward for sleeping in her own bed. And so we assume that we can come up with a reward that is more valuable to her, something that would motivate her to, to want to work for that reward. That's more valuable than uh, whatever she gets from, from coming and cuddling us with us in the middle of the night. And then the other thing that we realized is we are assuming that if we bribe her or reward her uh, for short-term intervention, that that's going to lead to long-term change so that we're not going to have to be giving her bribes uh, every night to sleep in, in her own bed until she's 18 and leaves for college. So that's a leap that, that we're making there. That's an assumption that we're making. Uh, something else that the theory of change has us to articulate uh, are the underlying conditions that are necessary for this intervention to be successful. So at the top in red, you see the conditions necessary. So if this is going to work, we're assuming and, or we need for her to be healthy, uh, that the room temperature is comfortable, that there aren't other distractions that are keeping her awake. She shares a, a room with Genevieve, so Genevieve needs to be quiet and needs to be no thunderstorm. So uh, all of those things need to be in place in order uh, for this, con this intervention to work. So then we come up with a strategy. Our strategy was to create a sticker chart. So this is the intervention, the service, the strategy. So there's a sticker chart that she gets a uh, sticker each night that she stays in her own bed. And when she gets it completed, uh, we came up with a reward that she gets to bake cookies with her daddy because her daddy is her favorite person in the whole world. So we, would, we were assuming that that would be more valuable to her than uh, coming over and sleeping with us in the middle of the night. Uh, so then we put our plan into action and we uh, then evaluated our results. So you can see here she has her sticker chart. She's got a couple stickers uh, filled out there. Uh, so first we looked and we saw that 
the short-term intervention worked. So she was able to fill her sticker chart and she got the reward of baking cookies with daddy. So that uh, strategy was successful. Uh, and then in fact, it did seem to lead to long-term change. This has been a couple of months ago and she's not been back in our bed uh, in the middle of the night. So it seemed in this case that our short-term intervention did lead to some long-term behavior change for Rosalina. Um, but the beauty of the theory of change in articulating those underlying conditions and assumptions uh, is that if it didn't work, we would be able to go back and look at that theory of change and start to evaluate why didn't it work. Maybe we would look at the conditions and see that those conditions weren't in place, that she was sick or there it was, it's been pretty thunderstormy uh, summer here. Maybe that was interrupting her sleep. And so then we would know that that, that could be the reason why it didn't work. Or maybe we would look back and see that uh, although we assumed that the reward of baking cookies would be valuable to her, it wasn't, um, or that it didn't lead to long-term change. So then we would be looking at, do we need to change our intervention or our service or our strategy uh, to, to have a better result? And then the final thing that we want, want to look at is the overall goal that, that we are going for, which was the, the, to improve the quality of sleep for all of us. So although we know that the short-term intervention worked, she filled her sticker chart and got the reward, it seemed to lead to long-term behavior change. We also want to look at, has our sleep as a family uh, improved overall? And if not, maybe that would help us go back and, and identify some other underlying needs. So we are working our way around the, the Roma cycle and articulating those underlying assumptions and conditions uh, helps us to do a better analysis of our success. So that gives you an idea of what a theory of change can communicate. So what's the need that will be addressed? Who are you seeking to influence or benefit? What are you seeking to achieve? So outcome, what, are, what will change? How will you get there? What's the strategy or intervention? And then this key piece of what are the assumptions and underlying conditions that we're bringing to this? We articulate that all in our theory of change. So I'm going to turn it over to Barbara. Uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, what is a theory of change and how does all of this relate to community action. Thanks, Micah. Uh, here's some um, uh, thoughts from a contemporary uh, leader of nonprofit consulting. His name is David Hunter, and he has a book called Working uh, Hard and Working Well. And in that, he discusses the theory of change, which um, really uh, he says, articulate the assumptions about the process, um, the process that we'll use for change, and then what's the organizational capacities to manage that process, and the short-term outcomes, how do they drive the intermediate outcomes and create the conditions that make long-term outcomes likely, likely. So he calls it a bridge uh, between the mission um, of the agency and the actions of the agency. So in this little graphic, um, we're showing how um, the agency's actions produce these uh, short-term, intermediate, and long-term changes, which really help to uh, produce the mission of the agency. Uh, this is um, like what we saw with the, um, with the sticker chart, with Rosalina's sticker chart. Um, that was a short-term outcome and then uh, does it produce a long-term change? And um, that's all part of how we need to consider um, the information in, the, um, uh, in our theory of change. So um, in, our, in Micah's example, the quality of sleep was identified as the most important piece of this process, the quality of, of the children's sleep and also of the whole family. And, um, and the, the idea was that the sleeping in their own bed would, her own bed would be the first step towards that. So let's take a look at what we are looking at in community action. Uh, we first have to think about what is poverty. We're the designated anti-poverty agencies across the country. And uh, so we, we really need to look about what we believe about poverty. And these statements are from the national theory of change, the national community action theory of change, um, the final version of which was just released in August of 2017. And it really identifies some key things about poverty, um, that poverty is complex, that it requires long-term multi multifaceted strategies, um, and that the strategies have to integrate the resources of the agency and the community. 
Um, and we believe that stabilization is a first step on the, uh, the continuum uh, towards self-sufficiency. So just like Rosalina's first step was staying in her own bed, the long-term uh, success um, is good quality of sleep and good mood and, and, and adequate development. So we know that there are steps along the way, and we believe that's, um, that's an important factor to know about poverty, that we don't just jump into providing self-sufficiency services. And then the last two bullets um, are about community stakeholders, um, knowing their community. We believe that that will help us understand poverty in the community. And we believe that family and community successes are interrelated, and that communities that are plagued with poverty cannot support a family's movement out of poverty, and that the families have to be uh, strong and moving out of poverty in order to make an impact on the communities. So <clears throat> why do we need a local theory of change? Well, one of the things is that when we identify the causes and conditions of poverty in our community, they may be different. And the impact of those causes and conditions might also be different. Um, here's a, just a quick example um, using employment domain. Um, it, we might identify conditions of poverty, the high rate of unemployment or underemployment, and, we, and that's a community condition. Um, or we might in, uh, identify that individuals uh, in the community are unable to find work that's sufficient to meet the needs of their family. So uh, what are the causes of those two conditions? Uh, well, they're obviously interrelated, um, but, uh, but we might say that, that there was um, job loss because of changes in the economic conditions of the community and that, um, that the individuals really were unable to uh, obtain these, um, the jobs that were available um, because there were uh, challenges either in the uh, geographic area or in their own resources. So um, we, um, we're, we're going to think about how this impacts on the mission statement, and I'm going to turn it back over to Micah. Thanks, Barbara. Uh, so we use our mission statements to communicate to everybody what our organization does, why we're in business, what changes we are trying to, to bring about. Uh, so a first step in creating a local theory of change is to look at those mission statements and to consider uh, in those statements what assumptions are we communicating? What are we saying um, in those mission statements? And to make sure that, that we agree with what we are communicating in the, in the mission statements and, ha and have some conversations about that. So let's, let's look at an example. Uh, well, in our mission statements, uh, we are going to be communicating assumptions about the causes and conditions of poverty that Barbara mentioned, and also what's our role, what's our agency's role in its reduction. And so we would want to uh, get some input from people outside of the organization, our board members, our staff, uh, our families that we serve, and ask them, when you look at this mission statement, what do you see um, that we believe about the causes and conditions of poverty and our role in its reduction. So here's an example. So to provide opportunities for people to reach their goals in order to enhance their lives, their families, and their communities. Uh, this is a mission statement. So I'm going to ask my colleagues here, Barbara and, and Courtney and Jarl, what assumptions do you think are communicated in this mission statement? What is this agency communi communicating about their uh, belief about poverty? I think the first thing is that people have goals. So it says um, that people will help people reach their goals. I think that implies that they have, that the agency believes that they have goals. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think also just that the opportunities are out there. Um, and so there's kind of a, an avenue for people to get to an improved state. Mm -hmm. That there, there is a path, right, for them to reach their, their goals. Mm -hmm. I also think that um, it says that the agency believes that they have the capacity, the agency capacity, to provide those opportunities. Um, either, you know, it doesn't say how, but they at least believe they can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Any other thoughts on assumptions? Okay, here are some that we identified. Uh, so, as we said, that we are assuming that people have goals. Um, and that those goals that they selected will improve their lives, families, and the community. 
um, and that they, they need more opportunities so that there's, there's a way to get them to fulfill those goals, um, but they need the opportunity for, to make that possible. And as Barbara just said, that we believe our agency can provide those opportunities. Um, so again, this is just a, a simple example of the many things that, that we might be communicating without actually realizing it when we work so hard to craft that mission statement and, and put it out there. So in the workshop, uh, we will ask you um, to spend some time looking at your own agency's mission statement and, and to consider what are the assumptions that you are communicating with, with that mission about your agency's role in, um, in po impacting poverty. And I will pass it back over to Barbara to talk about our services. Uh, so it's important for us to uh, think about those assumptions um, that Mike uh, addressed in the mission statement, because as you talk about those things, you'll see that um, there, there may be significant differences um, in the assumptions that board members have, that staff has, um, that local consumers that might be part of your discussion have. And you want to get all of these assumptions out on the table, clearly articulated, so that, um, that you know what's going on behind the decisions that are being uh, made. So these assumptions really uh, uh, drive the decision-making process. And one of the things that, are, that the agency decides on is what services or interventions or what strategies they're going to create. And we could really see assumptions in this section as well, um, in, in this area as well. So here's one um, that we're going to look at. Uh, our agency is going to provide credit counseling to low-income people who are deeply in debt. Um, and again, I'm going to ask um, the, my colleagues to uh, some ideas about what assumptions are behind these services. Something that I notice is that we're assuming that um, low-income people or people with low incomes would be interested in participating in the credit counseling and see that as a, a valuable use of their time. Yeah, and I think also just that you know we're also assuming that um, that there's a way for them to get out of debt, um, so that there is um, a way for them to improve that part of their life that they have enough resources that the credit counseling service will help them. Mm -hmm. right. so, anything else? We're assuming that they have poor credit. Ah, that that's part of, so that's part of the, the debt problem, is that they don't manage their credit. Okay, so here are some things. Uh, people in debt do not know how to manage credit. Um, there's a path for families to get out of debt, um, and that it has to do with credit counseling. Um, that they have sufficient resources, but they just can't manage them. And then there's that assumption again, that agency capacity piece that says we have the capacity to provide this counseling. Um, one more quick one, uh, this one's just a little bit different. Uh, we're part of a community coalition that works with existing and potential employers who aren't giving jobs to local residents. Um, there's some interesting pieces in this one. Um, we're assuming that the employers really want to work with the community, um, that they would be willing to change their practices. Um, we, or we are saying that they're not familiar with the workers that we have and that those local people actually have the skills to do the jobs that they need or that they could acquire those skills. But most importantly, I think this service or this, this strategy really uh, identifies the assumption that the agency cannot work alone that they uh, that would increase the impact on their um, uh, on their outcomes by working in a community coalition. So we can see that there are all these things at play um, in local agents or in local communities that are very different from each other. And so um, the national theory of change really sets the the large the long term goals. Uh, the big picture thinking about what community action is, but the local theory of change is really um, uh, necessary to, uh, to hone in on what the local agency is going to do. And um, it would also include some elements of agency capacity that might not be so clearly articulated in the national theory of change. Um, you're looking at uh, why, uh, why you do certain things, what, what specifically um, uh, is important in your community. Um, different communities would have different needs. 
So um, we, we want to have these assumptions on the table so that we can clearly identify them. Um, as uh, Micah and Courtney mentioned, um, this um, video will be could be accompanied um, at the local level by a, a workshop. And the workshop would include a process of developing a local theory of change. And there are some things on this slide um, about that process. Um, that it should really challenge the underlying logic of the connections between the activities that the agency does and what it what it believes its long-term goals are or the long-term goals of the network and admit where there are leaps of faith. As in Micah's example, they, they believed that um, the service of the intervention was going to achieve that goal, but they weren't sure. So that, 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 that's the same kind of leap of faith that agencies need, need to take. And um, sometimes when agencies are doing this process, they realize that they really don't know as much as they need to know about um, the, the community profile. And so they might find that they have to do different, to find out different information. Um, and that, again, that information can help to um, understand the complexity of the problem. Um, and then, it helps agencies to really be realistic. When agencies do these big community assessments, they see all the problems that there are in the world. And um, the theory of change can actually help them hone in on uh, the specific activities that are going to match the resources that they have. And it will take into account the context of the external community um, as well. And it will also help to identify the measures of success so we know how will you know if a result actually happens. So here's just an example of what a local theory of change might look like where you've identified the assumptions on the extreme left, um, identified some of the strategies and services that you'll do, the agency will do, and then really say what's the change that you expect to see at the local level and how does that feed into the long-term goals of the network? In the process of developing the local theory of change, uh, the workshop will guide you through using this guide to creating a local theory of change that was developed by NASCAS. Um, it helps to answer questions or to ask questions, actually, of the group that's gathered uh, about how they make decisions in the process. So um, I'm going to turn this back over to Courtney um, to talk a little more, or just to wrap us up. All right. Thank you, Barbara. Um, so just to point you to where uh, many of these resources are, on the previous slide uh, you saw that the guide to creating the local theory of change um, can be found on the NASCAS website. Um, but then we're also going to be housing all of these um, videos from the Roman Next Generation video series on our communityactionpartnership.com website. So whenever you go to our website, you go under Tools and Resources, and that's where you'll be able to find um, the Roman Next Generation video series. Um, you will be able to find both the videos as well as the PowerPoint slides that accompany um, the videos as well as uh, the workshop materials. And so definitely encourage you to check that out. Um, and as we continue to develop these modules, um, they will be added to that site. Um, so also, just lastly, um, please know that you all can reach out to us at any time, um, knowing that this is uh, not necessarily an interactive video, but something you're kind of watching um, on demand in your own agencies. Um, you might have questions that come up as you watch the video. Um, so please feel free to jot those down and email any one of us um, for more information. Um, or any advice or um, training or technical assistance around facilitating the workshop. And so um, here's our um, contact information, and uh, we appreciate you tuning into this video today and hope that you found it helpful. Thank you all.